All right. Therefore, today we're going to discuss the foreign exchange market, alternatively known as the forex market or the forex. Now, let's start by trying to understand what is it, what did you mean, how it operates. The forex market is a worldwide currency market and does not have one centralized location. Okay. The forex market is a worldwide currency market. That is to say, this is a market where currencies of different countries are traded. That is, we buy or sell foreign currencies. This market runs 24 hours 7. I'm sure we all agree that while in the Far East, for instance, Australia, it is now after midnight, almost down, but in the Far West, for instance, the Washington is still morning. Therefore, this market does not stop. When on the other side, people are going to bed, on the other side, they continue to trade. And now since participants of this market can be from anywhere. Why from anywhere? Because the participation in this market is through the use of a sophisticated network and communication system. Now, since we do not physically need to be at the forex market, then you can trade from anywhere. All you need is to have this sophisticated network communication system. So, it's up to you. You choose either to sleep or to stay active and participate in the trading. Because as you have noticed, prices change in seconds. Okay? It's just in seconds. Prices change. So, there is a moment where you supposed to either buy or to sell. You need to be active all the time. That the reason recently I have seen there is a use of the robots. The robots are there to assist anyone who thinks that cannot be active throughout the time. Now, in this topic, we're going to see the method by which currency is exchanged for that of another country. That is, we're going to see how currencies okay of let's say usd can be exchanged for the japanese yen why this changes the exchange facility is necessary and the forms in which such exchange are conducted like the buying and selling of these financial i mean uh, of these uh, financial currencies the foreign exchange market is therefore defined as a market in which foreign exchange transactions take place. Just like the financial market, remember financial market offers a platform for buying and selling of financial assets. Likewise, the forex market offers a platform for buying and selling of currencies. Of course, not only currencies, sometimes there are also some other commodities, but the forex market is highly specialized to trade currencies. Therefore, at this market, we expect to buy or to sell foreign currencies, particularly the hard currencies such as the dollar, Pound, Euro, Japanese Yen, and the Swiss franc. 
the forex market is divided into three segments. First one is the spot market. Second one is the forward and future market. And the last one is the current option market, or sometimes you call it the option market. Now let's see one market after another. Let's begin with the spot market. On the right of this slide, there is a very simple illustration. On top it reads spot market, and underneath you have an individual who have carried some dollars and the other one has some gold and there are some captions reads pay now and the other one goes like get it now from this illustration here or from this cartoon you can get an insight of what exactly is supposed to be happening at the spot market the spot market is a segment of the forex market where financial securities like currencies are traded for immediate delivery. At the spot market, okay, at the spot market, currencies are bought or sold for immediate delivery. So the reason you see this gentleman, they say, pay now, get it now. Why? Because at the spot market, not only currencies are traded, sometimes other commodities like stocks and gold. Most of the spot market trades are settled or delivered within two business days after the trade date. There is a price for buying or selling of these securities, of these financial currencies. There is a price for this. And the price is called the spot price. Okay, so currencies are purchased at a spot price. So earlier, you saw in those quotations, okay? Now let me come up with any quotation, for instance, USD, one USD equals to the Japanese, Japanese yen, 134136. Bid, ask, okay? What does this mean? What it means is that if right now your bank, okay, if right now your bank want to purchase one million USD, and for some reasons your bank has Japanese yen. So you want to exchange Japanese yen for 1 million USD. The dealer will sell you each USD at a price of 136. Ask simply means selling. And bid simply means buying. We do not use this buying and selling at the forex market. In most cases, we use bid and ask. However, I understand at your bank, you simply use buying and selling. Therefore, if your bank wants to purchase 1 million USD at this market today, the total amount that your bank will have to pay will be 
136 multiplied by the quantity of USD that you want to purchase. On the other hand, if it is your bank that have 1 million USD, you want to exchange for the Japanese yen, then all you have to do is to consult this dealer who will, will buy every single USD that you have at a price of 134. What I'm trying to say here is that the quotation that you see here reflect the dealer and not the customer. This quotation means that the dealer spot price for the USD today is bid 134 Japanese yen and ask 136 Japanese yen. This is called spot price. Okay. This is called the spot price. One million is huge amount of money. So it might be a bit difficult for this amount or for this deal to be finalized today. But the reason now for paperwork, maybe another 24 hours will be required. In the essence of saying that at least within 48 hours, T plus two, this deal needs to be finalized. We call this quotation well, 1 USD was caught for Japanese yen 134, 136. Now, if your bank, if your bank wants to purchase, okay, if XYZ bank wants to purchase 2 million USD, okay, how much your bank will pay in Japanese yen? All you have to do is first to identify the asking price. After identifying the asking price, then you simply use simple mathematics. That is, 1 USD equals to Japanese yen 176. Therefore, 2 million USD equals to how much? If you multiply here, you get your answer. That will be 136 times 2 million. So, this is amount of Japanese yen that you have to pay in order to acquire 2 million USD. Another market is known as the forward and future market. Forward and future market. Now, before I define the forward, before I explain forward and future market, first let me refresh your memory on the spot market. Okay? The spot market is the market where currencies are traded for immediate deliveries, all right? Currencies are traded for immediate delivery. Okay, we say it might take up to a maximum of two days, maximum two days. The price that we use to trade currents at the spot market is called the spot price. This is the price that we use to buy or to sell currencies at the spot market. Now, what if I don't want to buy currencies today? Now, here is the question. What if the buyer of the currency does not want to use them today? Let's say 
The buyer is a certain multinational company. Let's say Dangote. And Dangote intends to make some payments in May or in April 30. Okay. Dangote intends to make some payments in April 30 this year. And the payments that supposed is supposed to make is a total of twenty million USD. Dangote does not have these currencies. He has money in different currencies, not in USD. He, he, he requires USD, 20 million, to pay to set a certain debt by April 30 this year. This is the thing. Dangote have two options. Option number one, okay. Dangote has two options. Option number one, today is 10th of February, 2023. He can decide to wait until 5th of April, 2023. Then on 3rd of April 2023, he visits the forex market and purchase 20 million USD. That's the first option. Now, if he is to wait until 30th of April 2023 to purchase the 20 million that he will use to pay, then the price that he will use on the 30th of April will be the spot price. Why the spot price? Because every single day there is a spot price. And that's the reason you guys as bankers, you bankers, every single day the treasury department delivers to you the new exchange rates to use for that particular date. Every single day you receive either an email or a notification or a bulletin from your treasury department instructing you the new rates to be used or to be applied for that particular day. Why so? Because prices change in the matter of seconds like you see in the financial market or in the forex market. Prices change all the time. If there is no other changes, then yes, price could be the same. But you're going to need confirmation from your treasury department. So the first option is for Dangote to wait until 30. Now, here is the scenario. Let's assume that today, today, USD, okay, the exchange rate of USD per dollar, uh, excuse me, USD per Japanese yen is 136 to 138. This is today, 10th of February. Now, it could be possible that on 10th of February, I mean on 30th of April, the exchange rate might be or might not be the same. If the exchange rate will be the same, then Dangote will lose, not, will lose nothing. Alright? If on the 30th of April, price will be like this, then Dangote will lose nothing. Because it's exactly the same price. But, what if, what if on the 30th of April, the exchange rate turns out to be 
148 by 152. That is to say, the dollar will be too expensive for him to purchase using the Japanese yen. He will wish that he would have purchased the dollar on the, 12, on the 10th of February instead of waiting until 30th of February. So this is option number one. Option number two, option number two, that is, Option number two, that is, Dangote can decide today, on 10th of February, can decide to enter into a contract. Can decide to enter into a contract where he will lock, he will lock the price. So today, he's going to lock the price and the agreed price will be used in the future. And the future date we're talking about here will be 30th of April 2023. So technically, they are going to agree on the price to be used today. However, it will be applied in the future. That is to say now, that is to say, in the said future, okay, in the said future, if the exchange rate remains the same, which is 136 by 138, then no problem. But if the price changes to 148 by 152. The motor will not have to buy using the spot price of that date, which is 148 by 152. He will use the price that he has locked today. He will exercise his right under the contract that he entered today. And this is done at the forward or future market. Now let me define for you now. What is a forward or future market? This is where an agreement is reached between the buyer and the seller of the respective foreign currency in advance on the rates which the currency is to be converted in the future. The future can be either on a fixed date or within two agreed future dates. The contract formed is known as the forward or future contract. The contract formed is known as the forward or future contract. Let me take you back with example for you to comprehend. Look, instead of waiting to buy, let's say, 20 million USD on the 30th of April 2023, where it is uncertain about the exchange rate. You can enter into an agreement today. Once you enter into an agreement today, okay, you're going to lock the price. Now, agreement, agreement simply means contract. And that's the reason now this contract is called the forward contract. So, what is a forward contract? The forward contract gives the holder right and obligation. The forward contract gives the holder right and obligation. 
right of doing what? Right to buy or to sell specified amount of foreign currency. Let's say 20 million USD at an agreed price called future price or forward price. So the price that you will lock today, the price that you will agree to use on the 30th of April 2023 is called forward rate or forward or future rate or future price. That is to say now, if you agree that on the 30th of April, you will purchase every single dollar at 135 Japanese yen. Then on this date, even if, even if one dollar will be equal to 120 Japanese yen. You won't excuse yourself for no reason whatsoever. You will have to purchase at the agreed price. Again, if it happened on the 30th of April, one dollar equals to 168. Then the bank or the business counterpart that you have entered into a forward contract with will have to sell you at the agreed price, which is 135 and not 168. So, this price that you have locked, okay, this price that you have locked or you have agreed to use on the 30th of April is called the forward rate. And the agreement forms a contract and the contract is called forward contract or future contract. It, it becomes the future contract if it is to be traded at the future market. And if it's the future contract, then at the future market, this contract is a standardized contract. So, for you bankers, you will deal a lot with the forward market, okay? Where you have the forward agreement or forward contract. So, don't pay much attention on the future contract or future market. Pay attention on the forward market and the forward contract. So, what is the forward contract? Forward contract simply means a contract that it gives right and obligation. You see, right is the right to buy or sell at an agreed rate. Obligation, obligation is to fulfill this condition no matter the situation. You have to buy at an agreed rate on whether you'll be benefiting or you'll be losing. You must buy on the agreed rate, which is 135, you are obliged to comply. So forward contact gives you both right and obligation. The price that we use is called the forward rate. Forward contract. is a contract that provides right and obligation. That is, no matter what, you must perform. You must perform on the contract. If you do not, the bank will take some actions as against you. The price 
okay, which we call the forward rate. Is the rate that we will agree today, but it will be used in the future, not today. We agree today. And how do we arrive to the forward rate? Basically, what we do is we take today's spot rate and we adjust, okay? We adjust this one with the appropriate premium or discount. I'm going to show the mathematics of this in the coming session, not today. How do we adjust the spot rate in order to arrive to the future rate or to the forward rate? Now, the forward contract is not always beneficial. Why? Consider the following example. Today, the exchange rate between USD and Tanzanian shillings is 2,040. Your customer, your customer expects to make a payment of 20 million USD. Okay, 20 million is too much. Let me take down the number. Your customer expects to make a payment of 200 on 30th of March this year. Your customer does not want to speculate on the exchange rate that will be applied on the 30th of March and for that reason he decides to enter into a forward contract with your bank. And your bank agrees. Now the forward rate to be used on the 30th of March is 1 USD for 2050 Tanzanian shillings. This is the forward rate that we have agreed with your customer. Now on the 30th of March, on the 30th of March, the spot rate, the spot rate turns out to be 1 USD for Tanzanian shillings 2020. Question, will your customer benefit or lose in this contract? If you've been following, you will conclude that your customer is going to lose. The bank will earn a profit of 20 no, a profit of 30 Tanzanian shillings for every USD. This is a profit that the bank will earn. In another way around, your customer is going to, to lose 30 Tanzanian shillings for every single dollar that you will purchase. Why? Because the market price is relatively lower than the contract price. But the problem is that your customer cannot default from this contract because the bank will take some actions as against him. So your customer must purchase on the market, I mean on the contract price. For that reason now, even though forward contract is out there, not all customers prefer it. 
some prefer to use the option contract or the current option contract. Now, what is the current option market? The current option market offers the customer the right but not obligation. Okay, right but no obligation to buy or sell the currencies in the future date. Remember, the forward contract forward contract gives both right and obligation. Okay? So you cannot excuse yourself for no reason whatsoever from performing at the forward contract. But with the option market, the option market will give you what we call the option contract. The option market will give you the option contract. Now, what is the option contract? The option contract simply means the contract that gives the holder right but not obligation. Right for what? The right to buy or to sell specified amount of foreign currency, let's say USD 10 million at an agreed price called strike price. Strike price or exercise price. For instance, to the years 2014. However, for the customer or the holder to be given this right, he has to pay what? He has to pay a premium. He has to pay a premium. Therefore, premium is a price of the option contract. I'll take you back a little bit. With the option contract, with the option contract, for you to get this contract, number one, the bank will ask you to pay premium. So a customer must pay a premium for the contract. Once you pay the premium, Number two, the bank will give you right, but not obligation. So what is the right? The right to buy or to sell. Specified amount of foreign currency, let's say 10 million USD. At an agreed rate, let's say the strike price is 20 40 on maturity. This contract does not oblige you, does not bind you. It's not a binded contract. No obligation. What does it mean? It means on maturity, on maturity, if the market price is lower than the agreed price, you can let the contract expire and purchase currencies at the market price. However, if the market price is greater than the exercise price, then you can purchase currencies on the contract. So you exercise. Unlike the forward contract, which does not give you the option 
then the option contract gives you the option to either exercise on the contract or let the contract expire. For example, if the agreed price is 2014, okay, and on maturity, the market price, that is spot rate now, the market price turns out to be 2018. Then you can buy currencies by using your contract, the contract price. And what if on maturity, the market price is 2010? If the market price is 2010, that means the market price is cheaper. In other way around, let me put it this way. It is cheaper to purchase currencies at the market rather than purchasing currencies at the bank, where at the bank you're supposed to use 20. 40. At the market, the price is going to be 200, uh, 2010. So it's cheaper. You will be saving 30. Okay, you'll be saving 30 thousand shillings for every single dollar that you purchase. Therefore, you let the contract expire and you go purchase on the market. That is the benefit of taking the Currents option contract. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the currents option contract gives you right, but not obligation, right to buy or to sell. Okay, the right to buy or to sell. That is to say, there are two forms of the option contract the option contract the option contract can be put contract or call contract if you want to sell if you want to sell for any currencies in the future then you use the put contract If you want to purchase, if you want to purchase for any currency in the future, then you use the call contract. Okay. 